Well, hello, everybody. That was a, a, a sudden introduction. Um, I do apologise about uh, the, the length in time it's taken us to go live. We've had a few issues with laptops and and different things and, and the internet and all those sorts of things. And I apologise. I was a little bit flustered. I, 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 my English isn't the best, so the spelling of bear, that's all on me. I do apologise. Anyway, um, today we're all talking about pot and shed tools. So enough of the the um the techie side of it and the internet and all that sort of stuff let's get down to something i do know what i'm doing with um so wood turning and potting shed tools i've got a a, a bundle of tools over here um that we can uh, look at making i'm probably going to make three um and if we've got enough time we'll go into the fourth one as well um, but it's going to be a lot repetitive and for those that were asking last week that my skew chisel wasn't making much of a, an appearance it's all spindle work today um, so we're going to get the skew chisel out and have a good play with that one uh, as well. So we've got Matt, who's going to be doing the questions and doing the camera flickery and all that sort of thing. And uh, so I think we're just going to get started. Um, let's get the tools out first of all. So in this country, in the UK, um, because I know seasons are different and temperatures are different all over the place. If you're lucky enough to have a growing season throughout the year, well done. Fantastic. We're not. Um, it's still a little bit cold here at the moment and we're just coming into springtime where we're traditionally looking at sowing seeds and, and planting out. So I've got a few things here. We're going to start with what I'm going to start and it's a, um, I would say it's a turning tuition favorite. So when you pick up a, a lathe for the first time, one of your first projects is going to be one of these. There's a little dibber. Um, Matt, can you just go overhead so I can show everybody what we're talking about? So what these are useful and I was corrected. When was I corrected last week? I think it was um, about using uh, a dibber or or the name of a dibber. Um, these are what I call dibbers, and basically they are to to sort of push into the earth. That creates a little hole to plant your your seedlings in. I've got inch increments here if you need to gauge a certain depth, for instance, and that's a great practice piece for a beginner turner. If you're the first piece you're going to make a nice rough section with a rough spindle roughing gouge bit of skewer a little bit of um, spindle gouge work you got all of those things in there it's a, a nice simple um, project uh, we're going to couple that with a, a, t a smaller version and this will be the fourth um, little project if we get time to do it now this is going to be linked in with last week's project which was the the little seed pot maker and this would be perfect to accompany that that project um, a much smaller version of the bigger dibber there then once we've done that can you imagine sowing your seed trays you will need something just to compress the soil down a little bit this is just a little tamper so it's got a nice flat base um, and you use it just to push and compress the earth down if you wanted to make this square no problem just make this a little bit bigger and then sand off the edges keep a little radius on each corner though so then that will go neatly into the sides of the tray um, if you wanted to Okay, but this, as it is, you know, it's quite a big radius, but it still get up quite quite close to the edges. That's a nice little project, that one. Little tamper, and then finally, um, we've got a little line marker. So, if you're if there's any builders out there, you'll understand what line markers are. Um, they do the same job in the building trade for um, for creating a straight line. If you're um, a bricky or anything like that, it's the same job in in um, gardening. All you're going to do is go from one side of the garden to the other. The two spikes get put in the ground and you've got a nice nice straight line then to sow um, your line of seeds or plant out. So there's a couple of um, uh, interesting things. We're only going to make one of these. You only need to, need to see how to make one of these. And I'll explain a little bit more about that one um, as we go through the afternoon. Whenever I do a project, you guys always look up and say um, to whoever's doing the camera work, oh, this is going to be a short one. It won't be very long. Um, but it always proves me wrong and they always tend to end up lasting a, a, about an hour long so don't forget ask questions if there's anything you're unsure about um let matt know in the chat he'll then relay them to me he's gonna he's gonna try his best to keep up and answer every single question today if he can um so dibba let's go um i've cut some ash up here so we've got some this is probably a little bit thinner than the one that i previously made um but it doesn't really matter and that's that's a question that i know um, I'm going to get from you guys is what size? So I'll give you rough sizes, but it doesn't really matter. It's down to you. What what size do you think you're going to need for the garden? What type of plant are you planting? Um, is it just in the in the greenhouse for little saplings, or are you going out into the main garden to put bigger um, plants in? So that will dictate to you, you know, the size that you need to make. 
Okay. All right, Matt, how are we doing so far? So I've got one question already. Oh, a question um, already. It's from Martin. Um, I have a matched pair of ring centers. The point on the drive one has become blunt. Is there a way of, to sharpen it? Um, I'll pop it in a lathe and just take a little diamond file to it, get it spinning. So hold it in your chuck jaws um, and then get it spinning. And just a little diamond file. Okay, if you're an engineer, if there's engineers out there, files with a, a moving object. But just be careful. It's a tiny little profile there. Um, and uh, that, that should do the job. Um, let's just swap this tool rest out. We're going to go for a slightly longer one. There we are. Busy little workshop today. We've got a fair amount going on. We've got Ben doing a couple of um, recorded sessions. Ben's doing, um, Jason's doing exactly the same. They're doing some photography. If everybody's thinking forward now about Make Central in Birmingham in the next few weeks, so prepping for that. So there's a huge amount going on. Um, ben and Jason, Matt and, and uh, Steph and all those guys are going to be there. So if you can get yourselves to Birmingham at the NEC for Make it Central, it's always a great show to go to. Um, that's, of course, if you're watching live. If, if you're watching this in the winter, You've missed it. Okay, so let's go. I'm up to 1,800 revs there. I'm going to take a spindle rough and gouge. First one I grab and just rough down to a cylinder. So down to a near round. Now I'm going to carry on with the spindle roughing gouge. The reason being the spindle roughing gouge is there to do the job of not just taking down to round, but taking bulk material away. So I want to have a very slight, well, not a very slight, I want to have a taper. Okay, so there's the shape that I'm going for. So we're tapering down. Now, don't make this pointed. The, the reason being, if you... Um, you it won't last very long if you start poking that into the ground you hit stones and things like that a pointed dibber will always burr over so keep a fairly blunt end to it um but yeah you can see where we are here i'm going to put one two three four five six um increments there and then we'll do the handle so i'm just going to start tapering with the spindle rough and gouge just to get the rough shape. There we are. Now, I've been calling the, the roughing gouge, the spindle roughing gouge, more often recently, just to hopefully get rid of some of that um, confusion with that particular tool. Remember, that is for spindle work only, uh, Matt. Thank you. Um, remember that tool is for spindle work only. Um, if you start using it on bowl blanks, then it doesn't matter whether it's you're actually turning a bowl or whether you're turning anything in that orientation. A spindle roughing gouge is too big a profile, plus it's flat and it will grab. And recently on um, on social media, I've seen a few accidents, so a few broken uh, roughing gouges and things like that. Um, there's all sorts of helpful people. Um, on the uh, on social media that, that advise um, but just just to be aware a spindle roughing gouge for this type of work only don't use it on bowls or anything um, we have bowl gouges to do wonderful things like that oh my goodness my my signature skews disappeared i'm gonna have to go we're gonna go for a slightly smaller one in that case i wanted to use the big one but we're gonna go with the the middle size the 20 mil three quarter I suspect what that is, Jason was probably envious and nicked it, so he'll probably find it in his room somewhere. We'll have a look in a minute. There we are, just cleaning up all those areas. Let's just taper that, that end down a little bit more. There we are. 
Yeah, I'm not going to go too small at this point. Because we've still got a little bit of turning to do, but that's about it. Let's round over this top edge. I'm going to go through a spindle rough and gouge. I'm going to leave a little bit of waste that I can take away at the end just to get rid of that, um, you know, the area that the, the sensor's lying in. There we are. And now we can start shaping. So let's go. No, we can't. Let's put our increments in first. If I used to shape too early, I'm going to run out of room. So let's grab a rule. So, in fact, let's do it the other way. Let's go with let's go with a set of dividers. Then I can keep it the same all the way. So, twenty-five point four. No, one, two, three, four, five. Six. Now I want to. We're going to burn these lines in, so I'm just going to quickly put a little V cut in with the skew. Right now, we can start thinking about burning a line. Let me just go and get my burner. And whilst I'm doing that, Matt, have we got any questions? I think there's a question from Fuller. What are the choices for wood species? Um, that might be. Yeah. I mean, I've automatically gone for ash. But I suppose if we're, and, and again, if I'm talking UK timber, I would say ash, oak, beech um probably maple as well um but i can't see if i'm honest with you i can't see why most timbers wouldn't work really because we're not leaving them in the in the uh, weathers you know we take them into the shed or in the greenhouse afterwards um so i i really don't see see a, an issue with using any timber really obviously if it's really really soft then then no um I am even using for the, the tamper a little bit of uh, spalted material because that's what I had to hand. Um, now, we know if, if spalt, spalted timbers get wet for prolonged periods, they're going to carry on spalting. But that's that won't, you know. We, yeah, it's going to get wet a little bit, but then it's going to dry off in the in the greenhouse uh, or in the shed. So I'm still I'm not worried about using the, the beach with a bit of spalting even. Um, let's just create our lines. Carry on asking questions as you get them, uh, Matt. This is my little easy burner. It's just going to help those sight lines, really. There we go. That's now hot, so I don't want to touch it. Just remember that all the time. So now we've done that. That's given us a couple of or some nice lines. So let's create the handle. I'm going to go with, let's go with a bowl gouge. This has got to be comfortable. Remember, you're going to be handling this fairly often. If, you know, you're doing a row. And just join up that line. There we are. Happy with that. That'll do. And let's, do we want to? No, I don't want to mess around with another line. We'll keep it nice and smooth. There we go. Let's just give it a little bit of a 
are going over. I'm not going to sand too much because I don't really need to. For you guys, you know what you're doing when it comes to sanding. But let's just go with, I'm going to go with a 240. Just to blend that area over. And that's entirely up to you. If you're going to give this away as a gift, of course, sand it up. And I'll maybe put some finishing oil or, or something like that on it. Um, I don't ever bother um, with oils and things like that. It's going to get, it's going to be used outside. It's going to have its natural patina anyway. Um, and over time, and we're talking, I would have said decades for one of these to wear out. Once it does, then you replace it. Place it with another bit of turning practice. Let's go for my parting tool. Um, I'm going to take these areas down a little bit, ready to, to take them off the lathe. So just, just the tip of the skew first. So that's given, that's taken that down to about, probably about three mil, so about eighth of an inch. Now I can get the parting tool in quite close. And that's now left, that's probably about seven or eight mil. So let's, Let's cut that off with my pull saw, just because this is the largest area of waste. We're just going to sand that back in a minute. There we are. We can, we can then pop that little bit away. Okay, this little bit we can sand off in a second. Or you could, if you wanted to, just give that. I've not got really anything to lean on. But because it's such a small area, it should pop off fairly easily. So we've just got a couple of small areas of waste um, to deal with there. All right. So, yeah, Matt, you've got a question. Let's We'll do the sanding or the disc sanding in a minute. Let's do a couple of the others before we get to that stage. But that was fairly simple. Um, like I said, you can put a little bit more time into sanding and a bit more time into oiling if you want to. Yes, Matt. I got a question from Randy. Is is it a spindle roughing gouge just because of the size? It's a spindle roughing gouge because that's what it is. That's what it's called. It's like a bowl gouge being called a bowl gouge. A spindle roughing gouge is a spindle roughing gouge. It's just been shortened to roughing gouge over the years, and that's where the, a lot of the confusion um, comes. So spindle roughing gouge, two to define its use on spindle work only. All right. Nothing to do with size, because you can get spindle roughing gouges all the way from half inch right the way up to inch and a half. And I, su I, I suspect I'll be corrected, and I suspect that it'll go even bigger and smaller. Right then, next. I'm not going to do the small one just yet, because we'll run out of time, I think. Let's go to the big tamper. Um, again, all of these projects are very simple. They're all we're all between centers. They're all spindle projects. Um, I'm going to start with a slightly bigger drive center than the 16 mil here. So we're going to go on up to the 25. Okay. A bigger bit of timber. That's, that's the reason. That one there. Oh, I'm not looking at the spalting to be a deck decorative in any way so i don't really care which way around i put that um, this is just representing a piece of timber of this size and this size is 75 mil um, across and 160 so about six and a half inches in length and about three inches in its width okay and again we can rough down we all right for questions at the moment matt because i'm not looking up just shout at me when we have some all right Okay, same process. So we're going to rough down to a cylinder. Lay speed to zero, though. We've changed the lay speed now. So, sorry, we've changed the project. So we're going to lower the lay speed to zero, then slowly increase it till we get the right speed. In this case, I'm turning at about 1600 revs. And we'll go back with our spinner roughing gouge down to a cylinder.
So we're down almost to round. So there. There we are. That's it. So parting tool next. If we look at our tamper, the, the, the project's in there this way around. Okay, and the reason I've done that is I want to flatten this surface off. And I'm right-handed. It's just easier for me to get to this face um, to do that. The final bit of flattening will be done on the sander to take away the waste, waste area that's on the, the center there. Okay, like, the, like all of these projects, we're going to do it in the same, same sort of way. So uh, what do I need now? I need my parting tool. Let's go with our parting tool here. And we want a nice flat surface. There we are. That'll be fine. Now we can take away a little bit of waste. So this is now creating the handle. So we've got the widest area here, but the handle is going to be made from much smaller stock. So let's take it down. And if you want to, you could, I suppose you could um, make this in two parts. So you have a larger area for the tamping ed edge um, and then a smaller bit for your handle. Got a question, Matt? Got a question from uh, Steve. Um, he's been given some apple wood. Any good for turning? Yeah. Yeah, you're going to get a lot of people there now saying, absolutely. Um, apple was one of those really, really nice timbers. All the fruit woods are. So apple, pear, um, all of those timbers, they're quite, um, they can be really colorful. So especially when you start going to things like the cherries and, and damson and, and all those sorts of things. Apple is, is, is very marbled in its color. So you can have a very pale sapwood and a nice, um, nice, sort of olive uh center to it but it will be marbled every tree is slightly different cuts be <coughs> excuse me cuts beautifully and um, one of those grains it's not a particularly open um, porous grain at all um, it holds an edge well um it used to be like, used traditionally in um skittle balls if you know what the game of skittle balls in the southwest of the uk here we have a game called skittles which is a little bit like tempin bowling but done in pubs with lots of beer um and so the uh, the bowl the skittle ball which was usually between five and six inches in diameter, was made from apple because it was quite, quite hard with sycamore pins um, or another fruit wood pin. Um, but yeah, so it's fantastic to turn. Just be careful if you're storing it to dry for too long. It is prone to woodworm, so just keep checking it. Um, but yeah, you're going to have a have a nice set, uh, set, a load of timber there, I would imagine. Yes, Matt? i got another question from Frederick. Um, I have just acquired a beach bowl blank which has had woodworm is it safe to turn health wise uh, it's certainly safe to turn health wise whether you want it in the workshop is is another matter um if it's small enough to go in the microwave give it a blitz in the microwave for sort of 20 seconds 30 seconds that that'll be enough to kill the woodworm um if it isn't then you can treat it but i would start by turning it uh, to turning it to shape seeing what you've got left seeing if you can turn out some of the woodworm um, or all of the woodworm would be even better. And it's a case of keeping an eye on it, is, is the truth, to be honest. All right. Cool. Right. Let's just carry on, get rid of a little bit more of this waste. Okay, that's that's a bulk of the waste taken care of. If we go back to my bowl gouge now. Let's go to a, a 3.8. That one's a little bit blunt. Let's go to my other 3.8. And we'll just do a, a little bit of detailing. Don't make this end too thin. If you do that, what will end up is over time, as it dries out, it'll start cracking away. 
So I'm going to keep some some thickness on there. And I'm going to mix it up a little bit. If you look at the one that I've done to set up, I'm going to change that slightly. And I'm going to take this bead away and we're just going to have that nice curve. So we're going to use the skew again. A little push pull cut just to get that large diameter, the largest diameter of the handle down and clean. Yeah. Spindle gouge or bowl gouge just to bring the curve around top of the handle. We'll take that around even further with the skew. And then let's rough out a little bit more of this waste. I'll just use the bowl gouge for that. So I'm using the bottom of the of the bowl gouge. There we are. I think we'll. That's quite nice. I like that shape. Uh, shall we? Yeah. Let's just burn a little line or two. Just because. Don't have to. Doesn't serve any purpose. Just looks nice. Don't forget, that's hot, so don't touch. All right, just a little bit of sanding just to say that we have. You would do more. Well, I haven't got my dust extractor set up, so I'm just doing a token gesture just to show you that you can. Done. And then we're going to do the same thing here. I'm going to cut that end off. So let's take away as much as we physically can. And I'll go straight to my uh, parting tool for this one. There we are. That'll do. That's down to about three or four mil down there. Back to the little pull saw. Oh. So what we've got on this one, we've got a little tiny nib um, up here just to clean off. Uh, but overhead, there you go. A little tiny uh, nib here just to clean off. And then if I turn it over, we've got where the tailstock center was. That just needs to be flattened away. Okay. So again, no, we're going to put that sander on there now. I was going to say the other, we'll wait until we finish the other project, but we won't. Let's get these two just sanded up and finished completely. So tail stock out of my way just take that center out and add a chuck so i want c jaws okay on my axminster 114 well it doesn't matter 114 on the 100 as long as we got c jaws on there because they're my they're my gateway to hold To hold my sanding discs on. Oh, 
Lay speed to zero. Really important that. You put in a big sanding disc on. Don't be caught out. So lay speed to zero. Turn the lathe on. And we'll do our little dibber first. So when it comes to this, look, I, the, the thousand revs for me is maximum on this sort of thing. And the finer you go, the slower you go, because otherwise you'll burn, you'll burn areas. But don't forget, you've got surface speeds, different surface speeds here. You've got this running far faster um, than this. So use that. If you want to clear material away quickly, then go to the outside of the sanding disc. If you want to soften it a little bit and be less aggressive, go to the center. All right. And I always like to have so the back end high. So you're dragging the, the abrasive down on that surface. If you do this, you will get a lot of twitching from it. And I'm just keeping it moving. Now, we haven't finished that yet. Just bear with me. So that we're going to keep that there. We've taken the bulk away. Let's just do the same thing on a little tamper. There we are. That's that one done. So we just take off the bulk on this face. There we are. So we've got that nice and flat. Okay. What I want to do now is to put a slightly finer uh, wheel on. So I'm going to go straight to my bowl sanders. It just happens that on the 114, your mounting jaws close up enough to be able to hold bowl sanders. So you can put much finer discs on. Don't forget you've got all the discs that you would generally use for, your, for sanding internal and external on your bowls. So now we can go a little bit faster. Because it's a smaller disc, it's, a, it's um, just going to very gently, with a 400 grit, finish that off. When I say faster, I meant faster lay speed because now we're down to a smaller diameter. So that's that center, um, center speed again. Just to tidy everything up. Same on this one. And this will be the stage if you want to. To add oils, once you've finished either end, then you can add your oils. Finishing oil, Danish oil, that sort of thing. We don't have to worry about being food safe or anything like that. There we go. So that's re that's those two finished. Okay. So nice little projects, nice little beginner projects, but they're quite pleasing to make. Doesn't matter what level of, of um, experience you have on the lathe. And useful tools. This is the thing. We're busy all the time making fun things. When you actually come to making something useful, it's quite a novelty. It's quite nice, you know. Um, so we'll do one more project, and that's going to be the line marker. I'm going to do one of those markers for you. I just want to talk about them a little bit, though. If On this one, or on this pair um, of line markers here, what I've done is... I've made them from pre-machined uh, beach dowel. Well, that's quite a nice way of doing it. Now, that may not be available to you. So we're going to turn ours from, from um, one piece of timber. The reason I initially made it from beach dowel is because I didn't want to waste too much wood because there does need to be a little stopper, just really just to stop that string from falling down on, over your marker. So we do need a little butt there. So I'll turn it on the, on the one I'm going to do for you now, but you could have the option um, of doing this from, from straight beach dowel, um, doing a, a reduced section at the top here, and then making this little um, donut to go over the top. Now, in the next few days, I've just um, put words up for a blog. We've taken all the photographs. It's going to show you on our blog section how to do that. Okay, so I'll do the whole one or the, the one piece one now. But if you look at the blog, you'll see how to make the two piece one as well. Okay. So all of those projects are going to be in there. On the how-tos. If you haven't found out how to found the, find the how-tos yet, on the website, go to the far right-hand top corner and you'll see how-tos, videos, and all those sorts of things. Click on that and then you have a whole library full of our videos, full of the how-tos in blog form as well, uh, and ideas, and also the galleries there. So have a look at that. That's on the main page of the website, top right-hand corner. So nice long tool rest. 
I've got the same ash, the same ash that we use for the um, for the uh, dibbers. And let's go with, I'm going to go with the smaller center. We're still going to have a ring center at, at the tailstock end. Um, I've got a little bit of bark uh, on that end, so that's going to be my reduced um, size of that. It's going to go right down toward the tailstock. So this is going to be a little bit more shapely at the top and it just needs to be down small enough for that ball of string to go over this ball of hemp uh, string the center um down here probably i can get away with maybe even three quarters of an inch so about 20 mil in there it's quite big uh, of a center so you you know you're going to buy your string you know what what you're going to have to make in terms of diameter wise but we're going to do a little stop to start with though lay speed to zero turn the lay on rough down to a cylinder and then we'll work out where we need to put our string so lay speed is now 2000 revs much smaller diameter than what we've been using before um, everything's tight but i do like to double check spindle wrap and gouge So I'm going to stop the lay because we haven't quite reached that end. So we'll swap the lay over. Sorry, move the tail sock up. Good. All right, let's just do a mark. So I take... I haven't got another bit of string, so we're just going to take this one off of here. Right, there we go. So take that one away. So look, you can see what I've done there. Separate bead and a reduced area that that goes on to. Okay, so that's a, a fairly simple thing to do if you wanted to use a bit of pre-cut dowel. We're not. We're going to do from a slightly bigger bit of stock, and we're going to look at our bit of string, our ball of string, and we're going to allow that so I want to put my bead about there. We've got a bit of waste up this end that we've got to allow for. We've got to put a bit of a decoration on there. So there we are. So absolutely nothing over, over thought of there. Bead about that big, my little stop there. So we all, we don't all know how it works, but uh, my bit of advice is work on the tailstock end first all the strength needs to be at the head socket and that's where the drive is coming from so i'm going to work on getting this down nice and small okay probably down to about 12 12 or 15 mil so about five eighths would work um and that will be enough to go into the ground it won't be too um you know too stubborn so let's go with a parting tool either side of the bead first um, and then we can start roughing down a bit more so parting tool we all right for questions matt yeah There we are, so a little bit of roughing. notice the thinner you get the more vibration you're going to get so just just be aware of that you might just need to, to you know to take off some of your pressure and just calm your cut down a little bit maybe resharpen the tools I'm just going to crisp up this area here, here where the bead is. Good. Yeah. 
That'll be done in a minute. So let's just clean and tidy up this area. So I'll go back with the, um, the skew. Do you get a lot of vibration? If you're going to, um, I tend to support with the, with the left hand. Just support, not, not put too much pressure on. And I've demonstrated this technique um, a lot. I'm not putting my fingers anywhere near the tool rest. That's one thing. My fingers are behind. I'm making sure I've got nothing here that's hanging down, potentially grabbing into the lathe. And my thumb is just supporting the top of the skew. Bottom half of the skew doing the work. There we are. So that's down to a nice point. Happy with that. Let's move over. We'll do the top. Now, remember, that bolt ball of string needs to fit over this, so this has to come down um, in diameter. with a skew. As well as cleaning up, the skew is quite good to, to level out um, a cut line. So if you've got undulations from gouges and things like that, um, the skew can sort of iron out, act like a hand plane almost. rounding that edge over and now we're going to sort the bead out so i'm going to go with a spindle spindle gouge rounding that over let's go i'm going to use the parting tool as a little side scrape so i'm going to hold the, the timber put my finger on the skew use the side face of the skew just to give me a little side scrape there to sort of blend in that curve there we go same on this side yeah just move them out of the way for the minute. I think that's fine. So again, what we would do there is do a little bit of sanding um, before we get the pull saw back out and, and cut that off. So I'm going to do that now. Let's say we pretend we've sanded that, okay? There we go. Back of the tail stock off. That's good. At this side, whilst it's supported. Yeah, so we've left both of those little nibs behind. Okay, back to the sander um, and sand those off.
I can't believe everybody's so quiet today, Matt. What's going on? There we are. So, lay speed to zero, because I just finished at 2,000 revs, so... There we are, that's a thousand. All right, so we've got a nice clean edge there now. So if I can get the other one, the one that I previously made, this one that we've made today is a little bit bigger as you can see a lot chunkier um, than these but they're doing exactly the same sort of job you'll probably want to keep it fairly chunky because of the vibration and its length compared to the the bolt ones but what i'm hoping now my bit of string oh it goes over there even better okay so two of those needed i won't bore you with the second one of those you sort of get the idea but two of those needed um, and then that goes into the ground. You take your other one over to the other side of the garden, and then you've got your lovely straight line to to um, put in your trenches for whatever plants or seeds you're going to plant. There we are, Matt. I think that's it. I think that's it. I have any more questions before I wrap up for today? Uh, there was just one earlier. Um, will we be seeing Gabriel Clark again? Yeah, well, I suspect he'll be at Makers uh, with us. Um, certainly in terms of videos from us, you will definitely be seeing Gabriel again. Um, I have no dates at the moment, but yes, we've got something uh, already uh, already recorded that we're going to let you see. So um, yeah, looking forward to more of that and other Turners, young Turners as well, rather than us crusty old ones. Um, so there's a lot coming uh, with that. So yeah, please keep watching. Um, thanks for your patience earlier, everybody. We got there in the end. I apologize for my spelling mistakes. Um, I've never um, been that good at my English, but hey, you know, we're all good at something, I suppose. Um, thanks ever so much for watching. If you like what you see, give us a thumbs up, share us around, and um, I guess I'll see you next time, everyone. So thanks for coming by. Bye-bye.